Hey there, this is Andrew Wingate, and this is a CAM tutorial project for Pumping Station 1. This part has our logo on the front side and a pocket on the back side, so let's get started. We're going to go to the Manufacture tab in Fusion and begin our setup. First, we're going to create a new setup by selecting New Setup from the menu. I've decided to start with the back side only because it will leave the most to hold on for our second setup and leave us the most space to put it on the parallels. So we're going to define our first work offset first by selecting the z-plane and then by the x-axis and finally the point where we'd like to set our origin and then we're going to define our stock size. I know in advance that this stock will be three inches on a side and three quarters of an inch thick so we'll fill those in. We will choose fixed size box and plug in our numbers. I've also decided to take off the extra stock on our first operation and leave about 15 thou for our second operation. And it looks good, so we will begin making our tool pass. Our first operation is going to be a facing operation, so we're going to select face from the 2D menu. We will also be using tools from the Pumping Station 1 standard library, so make sure that you have that loaded. And I will have links in the video description pointing to all the needed repositories. Our first tool will be the inch and a half shell mill. Our library already has coolant choice, speeds, and feeds predefined, so we'll move straight off the tool tab and go straight to the passes tab. In our chart, we'll see that this tool likes a step over of 1.2 inches, so we'll fill that in, and a step down of 50 thou. So we will select multiple passes, fill that in, and we're also going to make a finishing pass on this operation. Anywhere between 5 and 15 thou is a good number to leave for a finishing pass, so we're going to do 10 thou, and we're going to drop the feed rate of our finishing pass by about 25% for a better finish. We'll click OK to generate our tool path and take a look. This looks pretty good, so we're going to move on to our next operation, which is going to drill the hole in the center. Select Drill from the menu and the center drill from our library. Again, speeds and feeds are already predefined in this library, so we're going to move on to the geometry tab and choose the face where we want our hole to be. Once we've selected that, we are going to move to the heights tab. Now the surface of this hole doesn't match what we actually have left for our stock, so we're going to have to define those. First, we're going to define the whole top. And for that, we are going to be choosing the top of the model. Remember that we've already taken material off the top of our original stock size and brought that face down to size, so we're going to go from there. And since this is just a spot drill, we're going to go 35 thou deep, and we're going to reference from the same place as we used for the top height, and set bottom height to negative 35 thousandths, an offset. And then I select the cycle tab, and it's just muscle memory, and it's a good habit to get into to select every tab and make sure that everything looks good. Again, we will be drilling, so we will select drill again and choose our next tool, which will be a quarter inch drill. Select our surface from the geometry tab and move to the heights tab. Again, the geometry of this surface doesn't match the amount of material that has to be removed, so we will define the top height as material top, but this time for bottom height, we'll be going all the way through the part. So we will select stock bottom, remembering that we left 15 thou down there for our next operation, and we also want the drill to poke all the way through the bottom of the part, so we will give this operation an offset of an extra 150 thousandths. Then we'll move to the Cycles tab, and we're going to be pretty conservative with this, so we're going to be choosing the Deep Drilling Cycle, and set our pecking depth to a hundred thousandths. This hole is a half an inch, so we're going to bring it to size with a final drilling operation. This time we'll choose the half inch drill, again choose our geometry, and again choose our heights. This time with a hundred and seventy-five thou offset, and I'm going to put this up to verify that it's going to poke all the way through the bottom. And finally, we will choose our cycle type. Again, we're going to choose deep drilling with a pecking depth of 150 thousandths. Everything looks good, so we'll focus on the large round pocket now. And for this operation, we'll be using the 2D pocket operation. We're going to select 2D pocket from the 2D menu and choose our tool. From the standard library again, this time we'll be using the 5 eighths flat indexed end mill. 
Again, the speeds and feeds should be good straight from our library with default values. We then select the geometry tab and choose our pocket selections. We're going to select the circle that lies at the bottom of the pocket and then select the heights tab and we'll verify that the heights are where we want them. You'll notice that on bottom height you'll see selected contour and that's why we chose the bottom contour of the pocket. You could choose other geometries, but by thinking about which contours you want to choose, you can save a little bit of work in the future. This looks good, so we're going to move on to the Passes tab, and we will now define our step downs and step overs. We get a maximum step over from our chart, so we're going to fill that in with one half inch. I'm just going to go straight for depth on this, so we're going to put zero for our axial depth, and 20 thou is fine for the sides, and we'll just leave that where it is. In our chart, we'll see that the maximum step down for this tool is 50 thousandths. So we'll select the multiple depths checkbox and fill that value in for maximum roughing step down. Once we've finished here, we'll go to the linking tab from our chart and we'll see that this tool likes to have a one degree ramping angle while doing helical plunge cuts. So we'll fill that in. Click OK and generate our toolpath. And I think that looks pretty good, so we'll finish the radial size of this pocket. For that, we're going to choose 2D Contour, and we're going to be using the quarter-inch flat end mill. This should all start to be feeling pretty familiar now, so we're going to select Contour in our Geometry tab. Double-check our heights, and we're going to move to the Passes tab. The only thing I'm going to do here is define how much stock we want to leave on our finishing pass. In this case, I'm going to choose two thousandths, and I'm happy with that, so we're going to click OK. Now, like many other things, there's many ways to do roughing and finishing passes, but the most straightforward way to do this is just to make two operations. So we're going to duplicate the previous operation and edit the new toolpath, and we're going to set the extra stock size to zero and click OK. I flash back and forth between the two toolpaths to verify that everything looks as it should, and I'm happy with that, so we're going to move on to our final operation, which is to machine the chamfers. There are many different methods to accomplish this, but for the first one, we're just going to do 2D contour again. We'll choose the 90 degree drill mill from our library, select the contours in the geometry tab, verify the settings in the heights tab, and move to the passes tab. Now in the passes tab, Fusion knows what kind of tool this is, so some of the settings are going to look a little different. Chamfer tip offset is the amount of extra depth that our tool will move down so that you aren't cutting with the very tip of the tool. You never want to cut with the very tip of the tool. So we're going to set that value to 50 thousandths and generate our tool path. That looks pretty good, so that should complete the first side and let's simulate this operation and see how everything looks. Click the setup one tab so it will simulate all the operations that we've just done and I like to see what's happening, so I'm going to click stock on that checkbox so that we can see the material. At this point on this operation, I noticed that there was a bunch of movement with the 5 8 end mill, so I went back to change some of these settings. Looking from the side, we can see that the tool paths are higher than the model. So let's edit this operation and go to the Heights tab. Remember that the first operation lopped off about 50 thou off the top, bringing the top of our stock now down to the model top level. So we're going to change that height to model top and regenerate, and we'll watch the simulation again. I'm going to skip the first operation since we've already seen these. And here we are. Much better this time. I think that I'm happy with that. We'll watch the last operations. And good. Let's click close and move on. 
This will be a new setup, so again we're going to click New Setup from the menu and start defining. The Setup tab looks good for the moment, so we're going to move to the Stock tab and define that. Now, we already know and remember that the size of the stock on the model are both 3 inches, so this time we're going to use Relative Size Box. This way we don't need to know or even care about how tall the model really is, but what we do know for sure is that we left 15 thousandths on the top of this model for these operations. Set the stock top offset to 15 thousandths and verify that everything looks as it should in the Setups tab. For this setup, we're going to be finding our offsets from the top of the stock and the middle of the hole or the middle of the stock as they're both the same. And we're going to click OK. You're almost always going to start with facing, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to make a facing operation, select our tool, define our passes. Now, when I got to the Passes tab, uh, I realized that we're only going to be doing this in one pass. So our finishing pass is actually our first pass. So I'm going to go back to the original Tools tab and change the feed rate down to 28 inches per minute like we did the last time. Looks good, so let's move on to drilling those 6 quarter inch holes. We always use a center drill first. So we're going to select the surfaces of our holes. And again, we'll notice that the holes themselves don't actually go to the right height. The chamfers make the tops of the holes a little bit shorter than where we actually want to be. So we're going to select model top. And for bottom height, we're going to go 35,000 steep. And use the same reference plane as we did for the top height. Click the cycle tab, because I always do, and verify that we have the right cycle. And click OK. Next, we're going to be doing another drilling operation. This time, we'll be selecting the quarter-inch drill. And this time, I'm going to select same diameter checkbox so that it'll automatically select all the holes with the same diameter. Heights tab. We should be getting a feel for this by now. Top height is model top. But this time, bottom height will actually be hole bottom. But we can see that the drill isn't actually making it all the way to the bottom of the hole. And that's because everything is referenced from the point of the drill. So we're going to select Drill Tip Through Bottom, and that's going to push the point until the 135 degree tip reaches full diameter. And that looks good now. Onto the Cycles tab, we're going to choose Chip Breaking this time, as that's a pretty shallow hole at under 2 times the diameter. 62 thou seems like a good pecking depth here. Whenever possible, keeping chips as small as we can while drilling helps a lot. And we'll set the chip breaking distance to 100 thousandths. This is the distance that the drill will move back every peck before returning to the bottom of the hole. So we've finished drilling our holes, and we're going to move on to machining out the logo on the front, and we're going to rough that out. For this operation, we're going to choose the 3D adaptive strategy. And again, we're going to be using the 5 8 end mill. Speeds and feeds look good. Checking the geometry tab. Defining our heights. In this section, we're going to have to define our bottom height. If we don't select the face down here for the lowest point, it's just going to be predefined by our step down and probably isn't going to be where we want it to be. So we're going to choose selection and select the face that is the bottom. Move on to the passes tab. Optimal load is what they call step over, so we're going to get that value from our chart. And it's the same with step down. In this case, we're going to use the same value for roughing and fine step down. We'll leave 20 thou radially, but we're only going to leave 10 thou axially on our Z height because we're going to make a finishing pass for depth on our next operation. Click OK to generate toolpath, and that looks pretty good. So we're just going to duplicate our last adaptive operation to create our finishing pass for depth edit it, and our main changes here are going to lie in the Passes tab. We want to make our step down great enough that we can complete this operation in one pass. So we're going to set the step down to one inch, find step down to one inch, and there's an error in roughing step down. I set the step down deeper than the height of the flutes on the tool, so we're going to set that for a half inch, and drop our axial stock to zero. Okay, and we get an arrow. The fine step down cannot be greater than the roughing step down, so we'll fix that. Okay, looks good. I'm happy with that. 
So the next operation we are going to semi rough out with the quarter inch end mill that we used before. Again, we're going to use a 3D adaptive strategy. Pick the quarter inch tool, checking geometry tab, and since we've already roughed out much of the material here with the previous operations, we are going to use the rest machining options. Select in source from previous operations. This is going to take into account the material that was removed with the 5H end mill and only machine the areas that are going to take away more material than we could with our previous operation. Onto the heights tab. And again, we are only going to have to change the bottom height. We change to selection and choose the bottom face. In the passes tab, we need to fill in the step overs and step downs. We get these values from our chart. We set the optimal load to 35 thousandths. We set the roughing step down to a half inch and the same with the finishing step down. And let's leave 10 thou stock. As I'm looking at it, I've changed my mind and we're only going to leave 5 thou on our roughing pass. Click OK, and that looks good. Let's move on to our next tool. We're going to use 3D Adaptive again, and this time we're going to choose the 1 8 inch end mill. Speeds and feeds are good. Let's move to Geometry. In Rest Machining, we are going to change the source to Previous Operations again. And in Heights, we are going to need to change the bottom height to the bottom face. Passes tab. We fill in 15 thou for our step over, as our chart says. Step downs will remain at 3 eighths of an inch. And we're going to leave 7 thou stock here. I'm leaving 7 thou because Fusion does some stupid things sometimes when it comes to rest machining and leaving the exact same amount of stock as we did in previous operations. Your miles may vary, but I usually like to leave just a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, a little mistake here. You can see that there are tool paths in the center hole, but we did already machine that in the with the half inch drill on the other side. So we're going to avoid that area. So let's edit the tool path. Go to the geometry tab, and we're going to be making changes to machining boundary. We're going to change that to selection. We're going to select the outside profile of our logo and the whole outside profile of the part. This is going to force the tool to stay in between those two selections and we'll regenerate the code. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to check the quarter inch tool again just to make sure that it doesn't have that same error. And it doesn't, so we're going to move on to finishing the profile. Again, we're going to use 2D Contour. And we're going to finish this with the eighth inch tool. Select the outside contour of our logo. The heights look good. And in the Passes tab, we're going to leave 2 thou for a final finishing pass. Click OK to generate the tool path. OK, that looks good. And again, we're going to be duplicating this operation to create our finishing pass. So duplicate, edit tool path, Passes tab, and we will uncheck the box for stock to leave. Click OK, and that should be it. Our last operation is going to be to finish those chamfers. So again, we're going to use 2D Contour. We're going to select the 3 8 drill mill. Select the Geometry tab and choose our contours. And in the Passes tab, again, we're going to use a tip offset of 50 thousandths. Click OK to generate toolpath. And I can see here that we missed the center hole. So we're going to edit the toolpath, geometry tab, add the contour that we missed, click OK. And I think that looks good. So we're going to click the setup folder for these operations, and we're going to simulate the setup and verify that everything looks good. Okay, everything looks good here, with the exception of the chamfer operation in the middle hole. But we know that that hole was drilled in the previous setup, so we should be good there.
Let's select the root setup folder and run the simulation one last time to verify that there are no collisions and that everything looks as it should. Looks good. Skip. I'm just going to skip the operations once I see that they've started and we've already gone through these. Okay, I think that looks great. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.